space time man experiences a kind of optical delusion of his consciousness past present and future are illusions don't be deluded by the appearance of things albert einstein our sensory faculties are entirely unable to discern in our environment the uncommonly subtle, the infinitesimal, or the infinitely vast. The delusion of time as passing and space as something are deeply rooted in our perception. Generally, they evoke no curiosity and we take for granted that things are as they appear. To the deeply analytical mind, this elusive pair has long been an enigma, and it has elicited volumes of hypotheses and conjecture. Still, modern science is not satisfied with its answers. Somehow, they do not seem to fit the equations. This is not a new quest of research. The same puzzle and confusion has for thousands of years disturbed the sleep of those who would solve its mystery. Yet then, as now, the answer was in their midst. How is this possible? Who among us is so outstandingly learned, so intellectually brilliant, as to have solved this monumental riddle? As is sometimes the case, we are asking the wrong questions. One need only to have asked the contemplatives, those scattered few to whom the mysteries of the nature of all existence have been revealed in their disciplines of long and profound silence. There is evidence that true insight into the greatest mysteries long predated the earliest extant writings on the subject. Mystical legends, verses and songs were passed down for millennia before the advent of writing. There are quite a number of such records preceding biblical times, and the Bible itself, a compilation of mystical writings, from cover to cover, explains these elusive truths in profusion, but they are concealed in order to protect the unprepared seeker. Though many scientists still wrestle with the problem of space-time. There are enlightened seekers in every generation who have experienced the highest mysteries in transcendent union with our source. It has long been known that time does not pass. We mistake for its passing the movement of forms, the changing from light to dark, the revolving seasons, and the seemingly elapsed time between events. Space is equally elusive, but these are essential illusions. Without their appearance, it would be quite impossible to function as organized and interacting societies, though some isolated groups still have no need of either calendar or clock. Actually, time is non-existent and there is no separation between past, present and future. But in order to experience the human condition, they must appear as distinct, one from the other, as a linear ribbon of motion. Our confusion about the nature of so-called time lies in the inability of our faculties to perceive and distinguish the difference between manifest existence and the cosmic screen of consciousness upon which it is reflected in the eternal present. Dr. Rainer C. Johnson said, space and time become elusive concepts in the microcosm, the changeless amid the changing, the eternal in the midst of time, the one amid the many. Time is an endless documentary of events being projected upon a movie screen, while our perception is that of only one frame at a time. 
it is the same with space-time. The part cannot be properly identified as separate from the whole. The mystery is actually much greater than it appears. We are trying to fit the round peg of an unknown into the square hole of a scientific equation which is itself deluding. The enigma lies in our false assumption that things are as they appear. Once we have identified the elements, their arrangements, processes and associations, we feel that we have resolved the problem and are on solid ground, but we have failed even to ask the most important question, what is its true nature? We do not even see the need for this question. Are not the phenomenon and its composition sufficient? The answer is, not if we would know the most significant truth about the object of our study. My humble apologies to science, about which I know little. My insight lies not in intellectually acquired knowledge, but from a discipline of profound silence in which limiting mental frequencies are transcended and the true nature of reality reveals itself far beyond any trace of personality or even the universe. It is the same principle of that of a spacecraft blasting out of the constraints of the Earth's gravity and into the freedom of another orbit, except that it is a spherical expansion rather than an empowered liftoff. One of the revelations resulting from union with the highest source of all existence was that of a multidimensional universe. This is also true of ourselves. More significantly, we and all else are a mysterious miracle in action. Clearly, in matters of the Earth's plane, we must proceed by its governing laws, but they will serve as only in its lowest dimension of density. Abstractions such as space-time and the nature of reality requires observance of the laws of their dimension. Here, the direction is from the objective effect to its subjective cause and further still to the nature of its source. In keeping with the laws of this dimension, we must think and speak of time as past, present and future. But the long-trodden path toward the mysteries of the subtle planes and the nature of reality is that of the opposite direction. The lone journey from the surface mind into the retreating depths of silence, the uncharted way from the blinding darkness of the day toward the true light through the inner portal. The wisest minds of whom there is any record had little or no formal education. Their wisdom did not derive from intellectual brilliance, but from revelations of direct knowing in their long disciplines of the deepest silence. Ideally, the scientist and the contemplative should dialogue. Highly valuable and beneficial results could result from this exchange. To understand the answer to space-time, the most direct route is the backward-turning method, using the mind to transcend itself in order to reach into the highest frequencies of direct knowing. Time is the image of eternity. Plato End of this chapter